ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Steady, and today we're doing something we actually haven't done for quite some time. It's going to be a CPU showdown, and probably the most high-end CPU showdown I've ever done by far. It's going to be the two top dogs of the Broadwell E range. So it's going to be the 6900K going up against the 6950X. Wow, so two really, really high-end CPUs. So let's first start out by talking about the differences uh, between these two CPUs. So they're both 14 nanometer Broadwell E CPUs. The i7-6900K has eight cores and 16 threads. They both have hyper-threading. The 6950X has 10 cores and 20 threads, so a bit of a difference there. Clock speed wise, the 6900K is coming in with a clock speed of 3.2 base and a turbo speed of 3.7. And the 6950X has a base clock speed of 3 gigahertz and a turbo speed of 3.5. However, both of these CPUs are overclockable and we'll talk about that a little more a bit later on. Now memory wise, so they can both take up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Both have a uh, max of 40 PCI Express lanes, and both run on the LGA 2011-3 platform, you know, so X99. So now, let's talk about uh, what rigs that these were tested in. So the 6900K is what I run in my personal rig or my test rig, this one behind me just here. So, uh, yeah, 6900K cooler I have on there is the Corsair H115i. Uh, the motherboard is the Asus X99 Pro, uh, power supply Corsair HX1000i, graphics card is my G1 Gaming GTX 1080, and uh, memory is uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum, that's at 2800 MHz, and the case it's in is the uh, Corsair 760T. And the 6950X is featured in an Intel rig, which was built by Playtech. So that features uh, also a Corsair H115 cooler. It's in the Corsair 600Q inverse ATX case, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, everything's upside down. It's, <laughs> it's very unique, I'll put it that way. They say it's for a better airflow, and it's got a very minimalist type style as well. But yeah, definitely an interesting case to build a rig in, that's for sure. The motherboard it's using is a Gigabyte X99 Design Air X. And uh, memory-wise, it's running the same, so it's running uh, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill memory at the same uh, frequency, so 2800 megahertz, so no changes there. Power supply wise, it's got the Corsair HX750i, so the same series, just lower the 750 watt as opposed to my rig, which has the 1000 watt. And it was also running a Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1080. So this should be very even, um, aside from the CPUs, obviously, but uh, so similar motherboards, um, but from different manufacturers. Um, the same memory amount and speed, so it's all very fair, and they're obviously the same graphics cards. So for my benchmarking for this, we did some uh, productivity ones, and also just uh, some in uh, 3D Mark to show sort of gaming, what, what sort of difference you'll see there. Uh, so let's jump right in and see how these CPUs do. see there in the, the more productivity orientated ones, especially Cinebench which shows a render times, we see there is actually a pretty hefty difference between the two CPUs there. Uh, however, when we move over to the more gaming orientated ones, we see it narrows and, and there's very little difference in the combined test. Um, so that's pretty much what I was expecting. 
you're not really going to be buying Broadwell E for purely gaming. I definitely wouldn't recommend that. But for the productivity type stuff, you do see that difference between them. Uh, so that's also quite interesting. And that's mainly what people will be buying them for is for productivity type reasons. Now, as far as the overclocking goes, um, it's going to depend on the different CPUs as far as how well they will overclock. My 6900K likes to be around 4.2, that's sort of its happy amount. And uh, I just did some quick overclocking with the 6950X and that liked also about 4.2, but it went up to 4.3. Um, so that's about the roundabout area for both of these CPUs as far as in terms of uh, where they like to sit uh, when they're overclocked, which is um, very good for Broadwell E. You know, these aren't a 6700K or 6600K or something. So, and obviously the, their base speeds are a lot lower than those gaming uh, CPUs. So I still see that as a pretty good step up and that should do you um, really well as far as overclocking goes. Which brings us now to the conclusion and what do I make of this showdown? So there's a decent jump up in productivity um, from the 6900K to the 6950X. You know, the 6950X uh, jumps up a bit. It probably would be somewhat noticeable for someone um, doing a lot of rendering, editing, that type of thing, you probably would, a number crunching type thing, uh, especially if you're doing uh, very large files or you know large video files and stuff like that, you, there probably would be a noticeable difference. However, when it comes to gaming, you're probably not gonna see any difference at all between these two uh, CPUs. Now, both of them are massively expensive, so they're, they're made for a specific audience. I'll put it that way. These are on the enthusiast platform. I would say if you're just purely gaming, uh, then I would just go with something like a 6600K or 6700K, uh, unless you've got a very specific reason for why you would need to jump up to uh, these more enthusiast chips. However, if you're someone like me, who does sort of about a 50-50 mix of productivity stuff, you know, heavy productivity stuff with me doing uh, the video editing, and uh, gaming on the side as well, then uh, Broadway Elite is absolutely perfect. It's gonna get you by very well for your gaming needs and uh, it's gonna be absolutely excellent uh, for your productivity stuff type stuff. I mean, my render times are way, way down now over what I was running before because I was just running a gaming rig. Uh, so it's a big, big improvement there. So yeah, both of these CPUs are expensive, but they do their job, they do their job extremely well and I would recommend them to anybody who wants a really high-end CPU that's gonna be absolutely fantastic and just motor through all your productivity type stuff. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.